my name is Thijs Havens. Uh, I'm part of the um, Ion Sound um, department of the I Film Institute. And today, um, in collaboration with Holland Festival, I'll have a chat with uh, Hilde Cordonati, um about her work, the film Joker, um, and the ties to, to Sakamoto's work. Maybe some, some parallels, some differences, some reflections on that. So, Hildu, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> we're really, we're really honored uh, you could make it today. Uh, we can imagine you're uh, busy. You must be busy, and um, yeah, we're really, uh, we're really happy that you uh, were able to carve out some time. About a year ago, because it's been in lockdown now for one year, mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you about a year ago when this whole uh, thing uh, started. You were just, you basically just um, came off the uh, the awards, uh, what should we call it, reign of your, uh, <laughs> one of the last films you scored, uh, Joker. So it must have been weird to, uh, yeah, to go into this basically lockdown with this huge success behind you. How did you, uh, what were your experiences the last year with that in mind? And like, was it just a curse or maybe in some respects also a blessing? Well, honestly, I felt a little bit guilty oh. <laughs> because because uh, I had quite a crazy um, I had quite a crazy year just uh, you know before last year and and, um, and like lots and lots and lots of traveling. So so I was um, you know I think um, in the first in the first month of. Um, uh, last year, I went back and forth between Europe and LA like five times, I think. <laughs> you know? oh, so, so I was <laughs> by the end of uh, you know by the mid mid February when I came back for the for the last time, I was you know I was so tired that I said like oh I could really do with uh, you know I could really do with not going anywhere. I could really use a lockdown <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like oh wow, well, I could really I I could really do with the world just slowing down. <laughs> And basically, like, you know, three days after I wished that upon myself, <laughs> we were in lockdown. <laughs> so, so I felt a little bit kind of guilty for, for having, you know, for, for wish that. So, so, so it's I, your fault, all of this. Yeah, yeah. So it, it might be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> before, we, before, we, um, before we talk a bit more about uh, Joker, which is actually the film uh, that we're going to show after. Well... Mm -hmm that we will be showing after <laughs> we'll screen this Q&A and a bit more about your work um, the uh, the direct occasion or the uh, that we're uh, that we're showing Joker is a um, a program on Ryuichi Sakamoto um, hmm. the composer um, he is uh, together with uh, Giselle Vien. He is one of the associate artists this year of the Holland Festival, and we decided we from from the I Film Institute we decided to put together in collaboration with the Holland Festival a film program, and we talked a bit with with the team of Sakamoto, and and he said he would prefer instead of looking back, he would prefer to uh, to basically uh, to look to the present and to the future basically. And then we talked about some names and, and, and some. And you came up naturally, I would say, as one of the yeah of the of the composers he he admires. Um, yeah, could you maybe elaborate a bit on uh, how how your paths how your paths have crossed and um, what the collaboration was like and how you look at his work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm also a huge fan of, of Ryuji. He's he is just absolutely he I, I just think he's a he's a magnificent human being and a magnificent artist and, and uh, you know I just um I, I I really admire admire him as a person and as an as a um, as an artist and, and to to um to just like uh you know look at his body of work. I mean you know, it's it's, uh, it's it's just fantastic what he's done, I think, and, and um, um, yeah, where do I begin? Yeah, so 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 basically, so he um, 
he invited me to uh, to uh, work with him on on uh, the revenant and um, and how did uh, that go exactly like he he got in touch with you directly yes. or yeah, yeah yeah he he got in touch with me directly and and he asked if I wanted to um if I wanted to uh to, to work on this film with him and and uh, I, at, at the time where he asked me, like I couldn't, uh, I wasn't able to go to the States uh, directly. So, so we tried to kind of work remotely first, and um, and he couldn't, you know, because of the film it was, you know, the, everything was very secretive and all that. So he he actually couldn't send me the the film itself. So he sent me. It was so wonderful. He he like sent me these. Uh, um, you know, it was like it was some some tracks of, of like something, some atmospheres or something that he wanted to have in the background, and then he was kind of describing um, describing the scenes on on the notation mm. paper, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was so, it was so funny because I had no, I just knew that you know the, the Leonardo DiCaprio was playing the main role, and, and then the, the descriptions were like, you know, uh, four bars of of. Uh, Running after the bear and two two bars of like you know, kill, killing the bear <laughs> and four bars of you know uh, like you know uh, can't find food. There's you know something like very very um, uh, you know descriptive, but but also kind of open. You know anything could have been happening really. So it was this. Uh, it was this funny process of, of uh, you know, trying to decipher. I was like, I don't know, is this, is this God food? Does this sound like God food? Maybe this is. Good. <laughs> 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 like a very kind of, it was a beautiful, beautiful um, way of, of working, uh, and also just like really says a lot about him, like his kind of openness, mm. about, about, um, you know, and his his trust. That he had, that he showed to me that that uh, he was even willing to give this a try. It was a really, really interesting, uh, interesting experiment. But we, um, but it didn't like fully. Obviously, you know, this is very hard to do without any without any image and without being in the same room as him. So it, you know, some things came out kind of cool. But but we decided that it was you know necessary for me to go to to uh, meet him. I had never met him before before this time, but we have lots of mutual friends, and, and I of course like knew his work very well, and um, and uh, it was just so uh, like you know meeting him and working with him for the first time was so incredible because he is um, he just embodies you know this this really deep sense of of listening and. Um, and his his presence is like so gentle and so inviting and and um, and the way he experiences music is so beautiful. Like it, it's so uh, physical as well. Like how he how he ex explains music and you know it's it's all of these like soft gestures and and you know it's 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 really unbelievable and it's it's so like his. His energy, like the way that he he embodies his, his music, is is like completely, you know, it's, it's, it's a completely different scenario because you just you just kind of drink in this 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 beautiful way of being, you know. And um, so so this recording session was I'm, I'll never forget it. It was it was so so absolutely wonderful. It was it was really truly truly special and, and then you know i had i got to i was i was playing directly to the film and his gestures basically so i was you know largely just improvising and, and um you know then he would he would say like yeah and then it can sound like well, you know he would he would kind of describe it and, and uh, you know it was it was just a very you know very very beautiful process experience and i loved the film so much and i really loved how the score you know was was uh, um, 
working with the film and and uh, and I think also the how the score uh, is kind of built up is also just like a very it's it's like such a um, it's such a Sakamoto score I think because it's it's you know it has these like really beautiful simple melodies that are like you know in their simplicity they're so rich and so um, you know so 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 deep and so rich with you know with with very kind of um, sparse material which is something that I really relate to it's just like you know I, I don't think that I always feel like you know music doesn't have to be complicated to 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 kind of have the steps to right. it on the contrary I I personally prefer um, having like less information in, in order to be able to um, to add my feelings about things myself and and to be in order to be able to kind of truly hear hear everything uh, all the all the nuances and all the details that I find um, more kind of simple um, or like less notes <laughs> normally but I, I just I, I find it um, I, I find it more enjoyable you know music music that has like fewer than more than more, yeah, so than right. more so, yeah. have you have you ever had any moments um, uh, since the revenant where you felt like that there was any type of direct influence. I asked the question because what was really striking, I found, was, for instance, the use of uh, these field recordings. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was really interesting that it was it was something that that you both do. Like I was just wondering if it's maybe in those types of things. And I was just I was just wondering if there are any of any of these techniques maybe that you share or you or you talk about as well with him or. I think well. Um, um, it was definitely not like a um, a direct um, source of, of inspiration like this this work, but I th I definitely think that like you know all all types of work that you do are inevitably to second like, forms. Mm. You know, it's, it's all part of the same kind of um, you know it's part of the same journey. So so like whether you're whether you realize it or not, like I think everything you do is going to some in some way inform something else but I, I guess the um, the use of field recordings is quite quite different I guess in the Revenant and and, and Chernobyl like in Chernobyl yeah definitely yeah it's it's like Chernobyl was basically uh, only made of field recordings like there's there's there was, there was not a single instrument this power plant into the instrument basically so there are you know apart from my voice there's like nothing nothing else instrumental in the whole score so um but i i guess like i guess there's lots of i think there's lots of similarities in the way that that um that me and him work because i think we well i think we both we both have like our main instrument which informs a lot of the a lot of the work that we do even though i think both of us like neither one of us are kind of bound to only having to work with that instrument but i think you know i think um for both of us like it's it's kind of like the it's somewhat of the the, the kind of core of, of who we are as musicians is is kind of bound to an instrument so we're not you know, I, I I I think we're probably both like this kind of musician slash composer. Like we're not like we're also performers. I think mm -hmm. both of us. I think for for both of us is it's um, having a, a like a practice on the on the instrument is is really important. I think to both of us. And I think um, also just kind of um, general kind of curiosity like I, I think we, we both also you know build instruments and um we're, we're both kind of always like you know searching for um 
you know, like hungry for new sounds and, and searching for like, oh, what's, you know, I wonder <laughs> if you do that and yeah. see what happens. I wonder how that's going to sound like, you know. What does it button do? do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What if I do that really fast? Or what if I do that? So I, I think, uh, you know, kind of uh, curiosity that's that's fueled with, with um very kind of purposeful uh, listening because you're 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 actually often both uh, named in um, as part of i would say a new wave might be a bit of a strong term but maybe not you're uh, often uh, named as basically part of a new he being um, i would say a bit of the senior one of the of the bunch but like a new wave of Mostly young f film composers like uh, you, uh, Mika Levy, Johnny Greenwood, uh, Daniel Lopatin, Alvin Noto as well, um, who basically are gaining, I, w I would say, are starting a new school or like almost are gaining influence or like breaking the mold basically of how film music was long. Mm, regarded and and also made basically do you see also the similarity with with some of the composers that I, I i i mentioned does it feel to you also as some kind of new yeah new wave maybe let's let's call it that or like a new yeah. direction and what are your what are your thoughts on it also um as opposed to the more traditional way of thinking about film music and traditional scoring absolutely mm. absolutely i think i think um most of us that you that you uh, us people, composers musicians that you that you just mentioned, I think uh, we all. Um, I, I think probably none of us would, uh, uh, or I imagine that that being the case, <laughs> would uh, would describe themselves as film composers. Like right. I, I think I think all of us are like very uh, multidisciplinary artists like I think all of us um, you know all of us have played or do play in bands you know and compose music and play instruments you know instrumentalist and and, uh, and I think um, for for all of for all of us I think films film music is just one of the you know one of the things one of the mediums that, that we work in and I guess that that, that kind of um, uh, it's it's just I, I guess I guess that kind of automatically you know when you when you have a you know a, a background in, in so many kind of different forms of music it kind of automatically uh, changes the way that you that you look at film scoring as such because you are kind of I guess approaching it more from um, well, just from a, maybe a, a little bit of a different uh, uh, way of, of looking at it than, than someone that's like really always been aiming to be a film composer and has really studied like, you know, all types of different film music. You know, this is the this is the way you score, a, you know, a, a action scene or this is the way you score a, a scene when someone falls in love or, you know, it's where, where there's kind of like these kind of classical um classical ways of, of scoring and the, and the classical kind of instrumentation that you that that um that you do for like underscoring and, mm. and, and all that thing. and I guess most of us um don't really underscore either. You know it's I think um I think I can probably say that I I, I don't think I like I definitely myself like I'm not a fan of underscore. Like mm. I, I I really like I, I really like when the music can can just like be its own character and and it can, it's it's not just like there to to you know color color the scene or someone walking back and forth and stuff you know it's it's like I, I find I find film music so interesting when it can when it can have bold statements and it can and it can kind of you know stand on its own and it can also like obviously be a part of the story like highlight the story and and lift the story up. But it can also just like you know have, you know, just like play a play a role like a character basically, mm. and and uh, um, I always find that like um, more interesting as as a form to work into that than than just kind of following 
you know, the emotions of, <laughs> of, a, of a team. So, so, and I think we probably, all of, all of these people that you mentioned, I think we probably all have that in common, that, that, um, that, that kind of sort yeah. of way of, of seeing things. It's and funny. I guess like also just to, just to kind of to end up with, with them, I, I think all of us also um, are, are kind of very curious people, you know, I, I think we're, we're all, we're all, um, like searching like you know searching for new things to hear and new things to to work into and, and uh, you know it has a lot to do with the space that the music is given i think because because when you have you know like a lot of the tv series and a lot of the films today like the blockbuster films or like you know um animation films for children for example mostly today are, are like you know wall to wall just like every single hmm. almost minute is, is underscored you know uh, and um, so you have like in a 90 minute film you have pretty much like you know 87 minutes of music perhaps so you have no you know you have no silence and you have no no space and where you when you have so much music in in a, in a film like that you know, <laughs> well, the more the more music you have, basically, the less space the music has because exactly. the music it kind of becomes almost like invisible because it's just there all the time. So you kind of stop noticing it, you know, which is, you know, and that's like you know fine and you know for for certain films and for certain um, you know types of types of mood you wanna wanna have and stuff like that, you know. But I think when um, when you're a bit more kind of purposeful with how you use the music, where you place it, how much you have, and, and just like the, the the space that you give it. But like, for example, in, in, in Joker, the music is mixed like incredibly loud. Mm. In most places, like, you know, it's just when, when you have, and that's like, and that's quite unusual that, that um, the music is given like so much space, you know, and that, that was quite, um, you know, I was really, uh, honestly, quite moved with that because I was like, "Wow, this is this is really quite." <laughs> you know, he really like puts the music really in front. So, uh, so that means like when when um, when you have scenes that have music, that the music can really kind of step in and say like, "Hey, okay, this is what we're doing," you know, and and, and can really step in, in the forefront instead of being behind and be like, "Yeah, yeah, he's walking, he's walking out the door, and then he's going." <laughs> <the door." laughs> so. So that's uh, um, you know I just I I, I, find, I find that you know really fun because then the um, the, the music uh, yeah like I said before like it's almost like it's almost just like a character it's like mm. one of the actors in the, in the film and of course uh, speaking about Joker specifically you know the, the music really had in the whole um, in the whole process of making the film the music was was uh, basically one of the first um, one of the first elements that were, that were even um, in the film. So, so I got the script um, uh, before they even started shooting. So I, I, I read the script uh, probably a half a year, seven months before they started shooting. So, so I started, um, after reading it, I, I started writing the music and I wrote a lot of the main themes and the, the main kind of moods um, b- before. So Todd, the director, was was really kind of he was already really in that sound world, like he was already really kind of in the world. And and so when they when they shot the film, they were basically playing it on set the whole the whole time. So so um, Joaquin was really a, a lot of the scenes that that he was acting, he was actually acting to the music that was um, that was ended up being the score. Like and and I think the most famous. Example of that is the bathroom scene, where where you know that the scene was actually it was actually uh, scripted completely differently. Like he he was supposed to run into the, this uh, toilet, and then you know he took out his gun and hit it, and said like looked in the mirror, and said like oh shit or something like this. And then the, when they were shooting shooting it, they were like, well, it doesn't really you know it's not really so interesting, and you know what what else can we do and and it was actually one of the. Uh, it was really early in the process of, of shooting it, so so Todd said to Joaquin, he was like, "Well, maybe let's just like listen to this piece of music and and uh, from Hilton and and uh, we'll just you know let's just feel out like just do, you know 
feel it out to the music. And uh, and this whole scene was basically born from that. You know, he just like he came running in, he heard this music, and then he basically just started this kind of choreography. Uh, and this whole kind of dance scene just was was born from his response to the to the music. And what was so interesting was that I had never um, I had never like I, I hadn't spoken to to either one of them about the music uh, um, beforehand. Like I hadn't really explained like what I had been feeling or anything. I was just like, well, here's some music, mm-hmm. you know. And then, <laughs> you know, I didn't really give any further explanations. But it was so interesting to see like a lot of the a lot of the movements that he was doing were somehow movements that I had also been feeling like as I was playing this music, you know, as, as the music was born, it was like very similar type of um, similar similar places of, of movements where, where uh, as, as Joaquin did. So it was like this beautiful kind of non-verbal dialogue of, of just like, you know, Todd sending me a script, me sending him some music, and then Joaquin just like acting to the music. And, and, and none of us said anything about it. You know, we didn't, we didn't talk about it until like the, Music is such a big part of the of the film, and like when you give it the space, when you allow it the space to really kind of be a part of the scene and be a part of the process and be a part of just like really setting the tone for the for the scenes from from the from the get go. I mean, it can just like the more I think you kind of uh, embrace embrace each each art form and embrace like what what each person is, is kind of bringing to the table, I think the more interesting it can be because, you know, then you're not kind of just running after the scene, you're, you're, you're just like, you're really doing, you know, one, one, you know, one u- unified piece. One, one question more, like, um, just, just a short one, you can, but any, any current or, or future, you know, projects that you already know about and can, and can tell a bit about or coming things uh, you know coming up but I, I did well i'm working on one film and then i'm working on a computer game which is oh, the cool. first time, first time i do that and that's a, a really interesting uh, interesting way of, of working with with uh, uh, sound and and music mm. in, in a completely different environment that's been really um interesting to to kind of get, I know nothing about computer games basically. So I'm just a, a whole new universe for me. So I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> things have really changed since Tetris came out <laughs> the last computer game that I played. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm recording uh, just next week, I'm, I'm uh, going to record the new record, the new solo record. Oh, cool, like a solo record? Like a. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm very. Very excited about that. And that's what I've been working on the last uh, days and weeks to to uh, to set that up. And that's that's kind of uh, um, yeah, 
today is, is kind of the, the, the thing that I'm most most excited about. Like, is, it, uh, is it is it in line with your um, your previous albums or is it like a bit yes, of a bit it of a departure or? No, actually, it's it's uh, um, it's it's very much in line with actually what I've what I've been doing and and um, it's I guess it's it's kind of um, you know my my solo records have um, are are very much kind of like a um, solitary exploration combined with with recording techniques and very much like one person with a with an instrument. But I found a, a, a very interesting way of expanding uh, expanding the, the sound world that I managed to produce completely by myself um, alone and live, like not without uh, multi layering or like you know mm. having multiple takes of things, which also combined like you know very very interesting recording techniques with with um, how we're capturing it. So so it's. Um, it's uh, quite exciting. It's a quite quite exciting like next step in the cool. process. Basically. But thank you so much for now, um, Hildur. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll hope to be able to uh, to invite you soon. And uh, good luck with the record. Beautiful. We're really looking thank forward and with and with future projects. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing a lot more of you. I'm sure. Thanks. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Bye bye. <laughs>